Our lives are laid out on a road of bumps, turns, struggles, and more. How do we respond? How do we endure adversity for learning and growth? I'm Aubrey Johnson, and we'll explore these questions and more on The Roads Rediscovery. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Roads Rediscovery. I'm your host, Aubrey Johnson, and I'm so glad that you're here with me. The Road to Rediscovery is about reflecting on life lessons to learn and grow from them, and of course, take it to the next level and help others who are struggling through dark times. Now, as you know, the Road to Rediscovery, we are very compassionate. We're very passionate about delivering quality content that is of value to you and your personal growth. If you like what you hear and you feel like you would love to support please visit roadtorediscovery.com slash donate. That's road, the number two, rediscovery.com slash donate. We'll even give you a shout out in a future episode. And as always, there's no obligation. We are truly, truly grateful for your listenership. All right. You know, according to spot.com in 2021, 63.4 million or 53% of American households were dog owners. My meager homestead would be included in that large number as, as after nearly a year of losing our beloved Tyson, we adopted a very energetic, high-spirited, Black Lab, Great Dane mix named Cora. There's no denying the cuteness of puppies, but when you adopt a puppy, along with all that cuteness, right, you also have to take into consideration their high energy, crying at night, nipping, chewing, uh, chewing on furniture, shoes, and more, right? How cute is that puppy now? <laughs> well, my special guest is the business owner of On Point Dog Training, where her focus is on reforming the unwanted behaviors of dogs using communication and canine coping skills. We're going to talk about these skills and also, importantly, how a well-behaved dog enriches your life and makes you a better person. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Kim Hawkinson to the show. Hey, Kim, it's great to have you here. Aubrey, it is fantastic to join you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no, absolutely. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to uh, to chat with us here. So um, I take it your family were pet owners throughout childhood. Uh, have you had pets throughout your childhood? Uh, yeah, I've I've had I've had a pets all when I was uh, a kid. As I got older, I think um, because my dad was extremely heart centered, and um, losing a dog, as many of our many of your listeners probably know, can be very traumatic. Yes. Um, and the mem and the memories that I have with with the dogs that I did have are just absolutely spectacular. So yes, I we we did have dogs when I was a kid. Gotcha. Now, did you have other pets as well? Cat, goldfish? Oh turtle? man, we had um, <laughs> we had a guinea pig, Coco, that would come to the refrigerator for carrots whenever he heard it open. We yeah. had cats. <laughs> 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 we had turtles. We had a little uh -huh. bit of everything in there. Yeah. Oh wow. So, but you took a special affinity to to dogs, right? How how early um, did you did you have that affection? towards dogs over say the other animals not that you love them any less but right yeah um i think it was just it just it it came naturally it mm -hmm. um there is always this pull and without you know kids not being able to really say what was happening or really knowing what was happening. I just, that's, that's the best way for me to describe it. There's always a pull to mm -hmm. be around a dog. There is always a pull to interact. And as soon as I saw one, it just, it, it made my heart happy. Yeah. Gotcha. Wow. Yeah. And, and there's something quite different and interesting about the interaction that you have with a dog versus any other animal, I guess, uh, in my experience, at least, um, you know, uh, the way the way a dog can respond back to you on something, whether it's favorable, favorable or not favorable, they're interacting. It, it's, uh, you know, what I would get out of a dog for interaction, I would not get out of a cat or a turtle <laughs> or a frog, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. Awesome. So <clears throat> let me ask. What 
are your thoughts on someone wishing to connect with a dog, say as a pet, but uh, but it's years after having suffered um, a minor, minor but impactful traumatic experience? Um, how, how is it something you just dive into, or is it should it be carefully planned and, and plotted out for that person? Well, I think because when, whenever we have a, a trauma, there's that desire to avoid all future traumas, right? But at yeah, the same yeah. time, there's, there's that pull. So mm -hmm. I think before moving into that situation, it's really connecting with yourself, mm -hmm. understanding what happened in the past and understand that it's not then. You have moved forward. Right. And setting and setting yourself up for success when meeting a new dog. Um, mm -hmm. It's regardless of why that bad experience happened. There may not have been things that you knew about dogs. There may not have been things um, that you were prepared for to react to, right. regardless of what it was. And so to set yourself up for success, you can do things like um, have someone, have a chaperone come with you, meet a puppy rather than an right. uh, in, in older dog. Right, um, right. Meet a dog that the person who owns that dog knows that they're amicable, knows that they're super friendly, knows that they just want to love and say hi. And mm -hmm. they can tell that person who is maybe a little bit reserved, a little bit anxious, a little bit fearful, mm -hmm. this is how this dog is going to react. This is how you need to greet him or greet her. Right. Okay, are you ready? Okay, I'll be with you the entire time. Let's go. Nice. Um, nice. And, and, and just make them feel at ease. Um, and believe it or not, dogs can absolutely read how we're feeling. Yeah. And so when I say pick, you know, um, have a dog that's calm, that's cool, that's reserved, can still get a little excited because, I mean, that's all of us, right? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, um, I wouldn't interact with a um, spitfire, you know, antsy tail wagging all the time, wants to get a yeah. mischief off the time high strung dog because they're yeah. going to take advantage of that person feeling anxious possibly possibly right okay but just setting yeah. them, them up for success yeah gotcha gotcha so i really really appreciate that clarification because um setting up for success is what we're talking about we're talking about mm -hmm. uh the benefits of having a well-behaved dog the benefits of connecting with um, you know, with a dog as 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 a companion, right? So speaking yeah. of benefits, um, when it comes to a well-behaved dog, we understand the benefits for the owner. But is mm -hmm. there can can you can you maybe unpack or explain a little bit about um, what benefits, if any, are also for the dog, uh, him or herself? Oh, I love this question so much. Um, and it's just because a lot of people, when they think about dog training, they, they, they're they thinking about themselves. And rightfully so. I mean, we're, we're, we're the humans. We're the ones in charge. We're the ones paying the bills, right? Right, right. <laughs> but at the same time, when you're working with a dog, you're, they don't inherently speak English. They have, they, you, if you're not making that connection, if you haven't opened the, you know, the treat bag two or three times to give them a treat, they haven't made that connection yet, right? Right, right. But so when you're able to make that connection with the words, mm -hmm. with the rules in your household, mm -hmm. your dog goes from not being able to have any idea what's going on to starting to understand the world around them. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it creates confidence in the dog. Imagine yes. going through life and um, imagine you were in a foreign country and you had no idea what the customs were. You had no idea what anybody was and you were just walking yeah. around. You heard a loud noise. What was that? And you jump to this because you had no idea. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. if someone says, you know, starts to explain to you in their own language and you can start to make connection, that's just a noise. It's okay. You're safe. You're fine. And you're like, oh, thank goodness. I feel so much better. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Okay. Okay. We're good. I'm going to keep on going. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so when we, when we train our dogs, it's not just so that they can do the thing, but it's so that they can have self-confidence in themselves. Um, imagine going to camp for the first time when, as kids, when we first got there, we're looking around, we got our hands in our pockets. We're not, oh, <laughs> right. what am I about to get into? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. When our parents come pick us up. We're like, where are we next time? It was awesome. I did all yeah. the things. 
everybody loves me. It was great. That's right. And that's so, right. <laughs> and so when you work with your dog, that's the exact feeling that you give them. I can do this. You can do this, babe. You, you got this. You can totally stay there for 10 seconds while mom goes to answer the door and come back to you. Look yes. at how amazing we did. Dog's like, yes, wow. I am. Look how amazing I did. And, yeah. and I don't think a lot of people, and, and not saying anything negative, but we don't often think about dogs in that way. We don't. Mm. We don't think we don't think about the, the the thought process processes that they have. We don't think about the emotions that they might be experiencing. Right. Um, yeah. And it's not that we don't want to. It's just we're we're new. We're green. We have no idea. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, we we are green uh, tremendously. And I love, love, love what you shared about um, being comfortable in their surroundings. And it takes time and it takes routine. And over time, they grow comfortable in, the, in, in that space. And then mm -hmm. they become more confident in themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. I have to use my dog as an example. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Cora, she's eight months old and uh -huh. she is one big puppy, um, eight months old and over 80 pounds. Well, uh, we got her when she was six weeks. So uh, about a month ago, um, you know, in the evenings when it's time to wind down, my wife and I, we would, you know, sit in the living room and we would watch a little television, have the lights dim because we want to you know, let Cora know that it's, you know, the evening, the day is ending, and we're easing into going to sleep. So mm -hmm. she's on board with that 110% ever since the first week we got her. That's However, awesome. and she's laying down, she has a chase lounge of, of her own that, that she uses and because of her size. And while she's laying down, just resting, um, about 300 yards behind our house is um, a railroad track mm -hmm. and um, trains. I see more trains go up and down at night more so than the day, but um, all of a sudden you would hear the train whistle or horn and mm -hmm. she would start, rah, 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 you know, and start barking mm -hmm. and everything. Um, and uh, as of just last week, uh, she doesn't even respond. <laughs> you know, she, awesome. she keeps resting, you know? Awesome. So, Fantastic. Yeah. So I think, uh, I think a lot of that has to do with, well, mom and dad aren't freaking out. And I guess also um, everything's still fine. Everything's still good to your point. Um, mm -hmm. And I've heard this many times before and there's been no major change or no trouble, mm -hmm. no consequence. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, um, I, I, that's the first thing I thought of when you, when you mentioned that about, you know, a sudden noise or something. So. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the, do you mind if I can I share a little, a little story? Please do. Please do. So, yes. so, um, I recently just were, I'm finishing up a program now. Um, I call it the perception modified dog program and where you basically mm -hmm. rewire your dog's neural pathways. It's, mm -hmm. it's so freaking cool. It's amazing. Really? But um, one of the um, one of the women in the group with her dog, uh, Griffin, she lives up north. And of course, they just had a terrible winter. And mm -hmm. she said that the snow plows and everything would go by. And every single day, Griff would would, you know, let them know, hey, you're not it's not OK that you're here. You bark right. right. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Go away. And yeah. uh, I said, I need you to name and explain to Griff what those are. Mm -hmm. And. I've started every single, or I've said at least in all of the meetings that we've had, okay, you guys, this is going to sound a little crazy, but just stay with me. Every single one of them, because <laughs> it's not normal training. But right. so after one day, now Griffin had been doing this for a while. After mm -hmm. one day, Cheryl named and explained what the plows were, what they were doing. Um, mm -hmm. They were safe and they were there to help them and, and all that stuff. Griff doesn't bark at snow plows anymore. Really? And it's just wow. like what you were saying, that that recognition. Well, yeah. mom and dad are cool with it. Um, yeah, yeah. Mom, mom sees them too. So I don't need to let her know that they're out there. She sees <laughs> right. Them. Okay. She knows. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And 
And it's just, it's, it's that recognition. And I think a lot of the times our dogs react the way that they do, whether it's through fear, anxiety, um, mass excitement, whatever it might be, yeah. because they're just ignorant of what those things are. They didn't right. ask to be in this world. We drag them into this world. Yeah. And so when they see something that they're unsure, that is what a dog is supposed to do. Hey, mom, there's some right. out there. You, you, no, no, you don't, you don't see it. You don't hear it. Okay. I'm going to let you know even more. And, and yeah. they start barking. And yeah. so Every single time that Cora barks at something, hey, mm -hmm. thank you for letting me know you heard something. I didn't hear it, but thank you mm. for letting me know. Hey, do you want to come back over here? Let's come over here. You can just chill with me and mom. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, again, another great clarification point that you made there, Kim, is the positive reinforcement. I, I've I've been hearing this uh, and reading through several pamphlets and books on dog training, uh, mm -hmm. and that positive reinforcement goes a much longer way than the negative. I mean, uh, and, and yeah. one, one great example, I guess, is if you're, if you have the dog on lead and mm -hmm. somehow the connection or the link kind of snaps and now the dog is, is free I mm -hmm. instead of, instead of saying, Hey, Cora, get back here, get back here. Wait, wait, wait. You know, mm -hmm. just say, Hey girl, and have a treat, you know, Hey girl, mm -hmm that's a good girl. Come here, come here. You know, because they always want to warm up to you so you can pet them. And that yeah. brings them to you. Whereas mm -hmm. a negative response may cause them to run, I guess. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Oh, I'm in trouble. Well. That's right. <laughs> oh no, I can't go back now. Oh, they don't love yeah. me anymore. Yeah. yeah. And that just <laughs> makes it worse. Right. In that, in that scenario. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh man. So I'm going to take a pivot back to benefits, but benefits, mm -hmm for say, um, for the human. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. for someone who has trouble with anxiety or someone who has trouble with self-esteem or mm -hmm. someone who has trouble with confidence, um, mm -hmm. could, could owning a well-behaved dog help them in, in that respect in, in, in those Absolutely. cases? Absolutely. I've, mm -hmm. I've found that, um, with some of my past clients who are a little bit more introspective, they weren't, re you know, they weren't um, mm -hmm. uh, extroverts, I guess, if you will. Yeah. Um, and they had, they had their dog, like their dog was their buddy. And mm -hmm. um, I think that whenever we get into something new, it's always mm -hmm. scary. Waking up at 5.15 to put my rear on a treadmill is so dang scary. <laughs> I don't want to do it. My booty is going to hurt tomorrow. It's going to be terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, I'm, but I'm still doing it. And so recognizing that things are going to be new and things are going to mm -hmm. be a little, maybe a little difficult. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's okay. And yeah. I think when we think about the things that we haven't done, the things that we have learned far outweighs that, but we're not thinking about that. We haven't learned, we, ha we don't think about the fact, well, I'm, I'm still breathing. I've learned how to do everything throughout the day successfully, every single thing throughout the day successfully. Yeah, I'm just having trouble, yeah. trouble with this one thing. I'm you. pretty awesome. Okay, all <laughs> right, I got this. Uh -huh. Let's see if I can apply some other stuff in my life. Mm -hmm. To helping my dog understand me better. How do I make, how do I get other people to understand me? Okay, well, I speak slowly. I can speak mm -hmm. slowly. Mm -hmm. um, I help them understand. Okay, well, my dog. I can show my dog what I want him to do. Okay, cool, cool. And I love getting paid. I everybody that I work with loves getting paid. Um, and we sure. like big bill currency. So if I give my dog that he views as big bill currency, I bet he's gonna like doing it even better. Okay. Mm. All right. Maybe this isn't so hard anymore. Okay. Right. Right. Um, and they start to and, they start to turn that corner. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I I tell everybody, and I feel like this is one of the statements that I use most often. Mm -hmm. Um, training your dog isn't hard. It's just new. It's just different. And when you start to implement the training, and it's again, it's not hard. It right. becomes part of your daily. My dog acts better than my children half the time. <laughs> um, and, and working with dogs, learning how to be patient, really yes. owning in your energy and just feeling that calm and owning that calm, mm -hmm. uh, that calm energy, that calm presence. 
Mm-hmm. has uh, has allowed me to be a better communicator. It has allowed me to be a better mom. Mm-hmm. It has allowed me to be able to process the life around me in a more cohesive mm-hmm. way because I'm, I don't feel the need to be chaotic because I know what it feels like to be in control. And it's right. being, being a dog trainer has helped me in so many more ways than just training a dog. Yeah. That, that is huge. That is huge. And, 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 and you, you, you went over to another great point that I was going to try to try to, you know, get from you, but you've, 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 you gave it to us. So thank you for that. And those yeah. are the virtues, right? So what are some of the virtues, the intangibles that, um, that a person um, uh, learns or develops within their own growth from mm-hmm. um, from being a, a dog owner. And, and one example I, I was thinking was self-awareness. And you mentioned it there, asking yourself, what can I do or how can I express myself to be uh, better understood by my dog, right? Mm-hmm. Um, would you like to fa- uh, chime in on any other virtues that that someone can, can, can pick up from being a dog owner? Well, I think there, I think, Owning a dog makes them a lot happier. And I think, yes. of course, we have our dogs around. Um, but when, and just like you said with Core at the very beginning, um, you, you're you just like, is that dog really that cute? <laughs> like, oh my God, if you pee on my, if I have one more wet sock in the morning. Right, right. Oh God, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, um, but just training them also gives mm-hmm. the human more self-confidence. Yes. Um, yes. I have, man. Okay. So going back to the name and explain, I'm still working uh-huh. on the cycles. I was super sick for like six weeks. I did. I wasn't working with my dog um, mm-hmm. and I didn't finish the program with everybody doing it now. Mm-hmm. Um, but one day when I was just learning the whole process, I sat there and I was like, all right, we're just going to give this name and explain things shot. Hadn't really used it that much. And every single day, Harlow had been reactive to the girls coming home from school. Yeah. Bus would come up and sometimes she'd bark at the bus. Sometimes the girls would come through together and Hoo! and I'm just yeah. like, oh, there's a baby sleeping. Stop it. Right, um, right. <laughs> in my office and, you know, and finally I'm just like, all right, we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. And I said, and I named and explained everything. I was like, hey, Harlow. Um, you're going to hear the bus come up. You're going to hear the girls walk up. You're going to see the girls walk up the driveway because we have a glass pane thingy on our, on our door. And then you're going to hear them come through the door. What I need you to do is I need you to stay easy the entire time. They come home every single day. I need you to be easy. Okay. And she had been laying down and she kind of cocked her head up and looked at me while I was talking to her. Yeah. I'm just like, Okay. Okay. And then about three or four minutes before my girls got home, I said, Hey, Harlow. And she looked up at me with this look like, what? Yeah. Like you can yeah. see it on her face. And I ex- named and explained everything. And again, the look on her face was, yeah, you already told me. Do I? <laughs> I was so busy in what I was doing wow. that I heard the door open mm-hmm. and there was nothing. nothing. And it was, it, there was nothing. There was, of course, my girls came through, but there was nothing sure. from Harlow. And oh. we're talking, she had been reactive for months. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't even know how long, months mm-hmm. since mm-hmm. school started. Yeah. But in that moment, I had so much pride in myself because I had done something that I hadn't done before and it worked. Wow. And Name I and so explain. Much, I had so much confidence in my dog. Mm-hmm. And I was like, we're doing everything from now on. You're going to know how to do everything. I taught her. Yes. I was trying to do keto at one point and I made something with pepperoni and I had the grease on the pan. I taught her in a matter of a couple minutes, her right from her left and my right from my left. Really? It It was, it was, and, and it's just, the, the intelligence that our dog has is completely underestimated. And because us humans were like, they're just dogs. And she's like, well, a dolphin is just another mammal. They're pretty dang smart. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, and it, it makes you so happy. Mm. It made, it makes me happy simply because I'm like, my dog has been living on this earth for seven years and she has been listening to us stupid humans for yeah. seven years. She knows exactly what is going on. And that's exciting because now you can tell her what to do. And she's like, oh, okay. 
Yeah, and that's a true living companion, a companion that yeah. you're living with that not just living with and feeding and taking to go potty and walk, but to interact with. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's awesome. Wow. Name and explain. I'm going mm -hmm. to... I'm going to try that on Coro for a couple things, a couple areas that she needs some developing in. A lot yeah. of it is because she uh, is a puppy and has very little impulse control. Mm -hmm. But um, another part is, you know, she's a, she's a bright pup. She's smart. Mm -hmm. She takes to the commands very, very nicely. So I'm sure she can pick up on this name and explain as well. So Wow, that's amazing. And they are, we don't give them enough credit for how smart they are in a lot of cases, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's crazy. Like when you, when I saw that, I'm just sitting there like, oh my God, you're so smart. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. That is so cool. So, oh yeah. You know, one other virtue that I've learned in a big way from dogs um, as a dog owner myself is the virtue of forgiveness mm, you know that's a big one that yeah. has been a huge eye-opening uh revelation to me um in years past and you know up to now as a dog owner because you know they're the perfect example of it, in my opinion. You know, I could yell at my pup for chewing up my shoe or for chewing, you know, on the windowsill or a piece of furniture and just be so mad, bad dog, bad dog, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then ignore and then walk out the door and go to the store, get a cup of coffee uh, at Starbucks, come back. And as soon as I walk in the door, She's just as happy, wagging her tail um, and eager to see you, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not like uh, you're back after you own at me. Yeah. <laughs> see you around. You know, it, it's not that. No, she yeah. she's eager. You know, it's like all's forgiven. I'm just yeah. happy. I'm just happy to, 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 to have you here. You're all I've got, you know, so yeah. for it, it, and, and that that tells me, you know, if they can do that to us and for us. You know, mm -hmm. why can't we practice that with each other? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, oh, man. There's there's a lot of not so great things happening in the world yeah, right now. It truly is. And yeah. and yeah, if I could, I just want everybody to just show a little bit more compassion Agreed. to one another, a little bit more love, a little bit more understanding, Agreed. a little bit more hope. And, and and spread that simply because without hope, without kindness, what are we working for? Yeah, yeah. And exactly. we lose sight on our, yeah. of our purpose, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we really do. So, Kim, what is working with dogs all these years and how has working with all these, um, you know, with dogs these years impacted mm -hmm. your life? I think... Learning, oh man, learning how to set boundaries, mm -hmm. um, which I think is really good because of course, you know, you have to have boundaries with yes. dogs. But when you learn to make a boundary with with an animal, mm -hmm. it becomes a whole lot easier with humans. Um, and I think it's easier with humans because when you're making, um, when you're creating that, that uh, barrier for, yeah. or I'm sorry, boundary with, mm -hmm. with an animal, there are several steps to take. There are, you know, and there's body language, there's understanding, there's uh, the training, the rewards, the, you know, the, all the stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. With humans, if I know I don't want something, mm -hmm. I'm just going to say, hey, Aubrey, do me a favor. Don't ask that question. You'll be like, okay. And it's going to yeah. be fine, right? Yeah, yeah. So much simpler. Mm -hmm. But we just have to have the, we have to have the desire to actually ask for that boundary. We have to have the strength depending on who we're talking to, to actually right. ask for that right. boundary. Um, again, with the calm and just staying, staying calm, staying present in the moment. Um, mm -hmm. I reckon uh, my, my first dog bite was um, little Jack Russell 
and um, it was in the face. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Right, dead serious. Yeah. Um, and I don't have any scars. Like, but Good. here's 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 what I learned. Mm -hmm. A dog is 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 so simple, and they do what they know how to do, or yeah. that they feel comfortable doing. And unbeknownst gotcha. to me, this dog had bitten several people and he came up to me and he curled up and I was kneeling down and he curled up in my little nook. I'm like, and it mentally I'm like, yes, I broke the really? barrier. It did so <laughs> and, I, and that's when I made the mistake. I leaned in maybe mm -hmm. an inch and, I, and I'm just softly petting his chest. That right. one inch was enough for him to say, Hey, I'm not comfortable with what you're doing. He tilted his head up. He mm -hmm. jabbed me. Um, like on the inside of the lip, not even on the outside, but on the inside of the lip, and it went straight back down and stayed there. Oh my god. He gosh. was totally fine with me, but that's all he knew how to do. I see. And so when I look at people, mm -hmm. what are they, what are they, what's the only way they know how to defend themselves? What's the only way that they know how to stick up for themselves? What what is what is the only way that they know how to live their life? Mm -hmm. And I can't blame them for that because no. I wasn't there during the past experiences they had or yeah. negative positive things i i wasn't there for any of that but all i can do right. is react to what's in front of me and right. so it's it's allowed me to be more compassionate it's allowed me to teach to teach my children really yeah. look yeah. at look at what's in front of you okay don't yeah. judge somebody for what you heard happened in the past how are they acting now right okay. Good, right? Okay, great. Yeah. And you do the exact same thing to them. You be nice. You be you mm. be kind. You do you do all those things. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just like my heart is. So, oh my god! I, I like I, I I'm I'm trying not to get off a clamp, um, <laughs> but it it really does it really does fill my heart because I've learned so much. I've learned so many life lessons. Like that book, my cat taught me how to life. Totally yeah. true. I haven't read it, but I'm just guessing it's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's it's so true because when you have to step back and take that extra time, you're mm -hmm. able to you, you're able to learn how to observe life around you. Yes. Um, and, and in doing so, you're able to have a different perspective on things, not just on life itself, but on yourself. Yeah. That is some great context. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I mean, those are huge impacts in your life, you know, and, yeah. and not just you as a person, but also as a mother, you know, and in <clears throat> teaching your children, um, treat others the way you would want to be treated, lead by example, be a, the best example, you know, of yourself. Yeah. So um, thank you so much for sharing those virtues, Kim. Um, You're I have a strange question. I, I just want to know your take on this. Okay. Um, not sure how big of a Disney fan you are, but mm -hmm. um, have you seen 101 Dalmatians? The one with um, Emma Stone? Uh, no, th I'm talking about uh, way, way back the, the animated version. Yeah. It's, it's been a little bit. It's okay. been a little bit, but yes, I have. Okay. Um, the reason why, and, and I won't go real deep into the 101 Dalmatians, but uh, in the beginning of the movie, I, um, y you know, you, you hear the voice of the dogs and um, the dog, I found this interesting. The dog referred the human as his pet and her mm -hmm. pet. And I was just wondering, what are your what are your thoughts on that? Sure, it's a cartoon, and that was a <laughs> reference made there. But in reality, are I mean, are 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 they our pet, or are we their pet, or this whole I pet think, thing? <laughs> <laughs> I think when a dog comes into our house, I think mm -hmm. they're just trying to find their way in life. Yeah. Um. And yes, they know that that we're humans. They know we're different, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, they're trying to find out where they stand in that household. Okay. Um, I, I kind of think of a dog as a as an alien when it first comes into your house. It okay. doesn't know what is what. Right. Um, 
And so the things that we do with our dog, the boundaries that we set, the the rules that we set, the consequences that we give, mm -hmm. um, allow them to understand you are loved, you are safe, but this is okay and this isn't. Yes. Um, yes. And it's and it's and it's done with love. It's done with companionship. It's done mm -hmm. with all of that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And there, there's a reason there's a uh, an alpha in a group. And I don't, I don't like using that word because when I say yeah. it, I feel like a big burly dude should be standing with his <laughs> wider than shoulder width apart with his head tilted right. to his side and his chin cocked up. I'm alpha. And it's, I just, I don't, <laughs> I don't take care for it. But right. within that, within that dog pack, before they were domesticated, the alpha made all the rules. If you cross that line and you broke a rule, you were going to get your tail spun around a little bit. Hey man, sure. don't do yeah, that yeah. ever again. Right. And the uh -huh. dog, Got into you know he he knew his rule knew his role real quick, and mm -hmm. so when the the whole benefit about training your dog is that when you set those rules and boundaries for your dog, when you decide if it's going to be a good consequence or a bad consequence, you're showing your dog that you support them. You're showing your dog that you're the leader. You're showing your dog that they don't have to make all the decisions because you got this. You just stand gotcha. off. I got this. Um, and so you become a better leader for your mm -hmm. dog when you do that, which again, creates a more confident dog and mm -hmm. creates a dog that wants to follow. They're not just willy nilly. Oh, you here again? Fine. I'll <laughs> spin over here on the floor. Um, but yeah, I don't, that's, that's a really good question about the pet. I hadn't heard that one before. So I, yeah, I don't, I don't think our dogs think of us as pets. They, I'm sure we do some stuff strange stuff and they just cock their head to the side and think to themselves yeah. what are they doing now oh uh, like, yeah yeah crazy human um yeah 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 and you're tr they're trying to figure that out right uh, <laughs> yeah you know that kind of reminds me there's um there's a there's a dear friend of mine from uh well i live in north texas now but uh, for seven years and uh, before that i'm i'm from cincinnati ohio and so um, um, a friend of mine from back, back up North. Um, she, she has always had dogs and, um, she lives alone. She, she has two and she took a very unique approach as far as the relationship she has with her dogs. She says, I'm not their mom. I'm not mommy. You know, there's no daddy. Um, you know, they, they live with me. I live with them and and i'm the master and they're the pets and so i was thinking oh okay because usually you hear you hear the humans refer you know to each other through the dog as mom or dad mm -hmm. and uh yeah. and, and and hers was an interesting uh just take you know um and, and she's a great owner i mean you know yeah. but it was just it was just her perspective saying you know i'm not their mom but mm -hmm. you know, this is this is our our relationship. So um, I don't know. I just found that interesting. Do you have any thoughts or comments on 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 that? Is it okay for people I, to have that type of connection with their pet? I think I think so. Um, and I mm -hmm. think it's just I think it's just everybody's perspective. Um, mm -hmm. For whatever reason, your friend was just like, well, mom. When I think of a mom. This is what I think of when I think of a dog mom. This is what I think of. Well, I don't want my relationship to with my dogs to be like that, mm -hmm. but I can be their master, and I can yeah. love them, and I can yeah. tell them what I what I need from them. So that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, she she she's had dogs for a very long time. I'm sure she yeah. loves her dogs unconditionally. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. And so it's whatever term you want to give yourself, I okay. think is, I think is completely fine. Okay. Um, and I think as long as the dogs are living a happy life and mm -hmm. more importantly, you are living a happy life because yes. if you're not living a happy life, there's no way that those dogs are living a happy life. Understood. Yeah. Understood. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. So Kim, how can the listeners connect with you, learn more about the great work you're doing and helping people uh, train and uh, raise well-behaved dogs that maybe even get some hints, tips, and tricks. How can they connect with you? 
Well, let's see. Um, I have a Facebook group. It's called Dog Trading Magic for awesome okay. and dedicated dog mom and dads. Um, I'm always doing workshops. Um, I'm actually building up to a summit, which is very exciting because I haven't done one before. So nice. I'm super excited about that. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I always have my foot dabbling in a little something, but I, I love serving simply because the more that I serve, the happier people are. Um, and that just, that just, that, that brings me so much joy. Um, yeah. I think, you know, a lot of people, um, that get into business, well, I need to make five figures a year and I need to, you know, I, I need this and I need that. And I need, you know, yeah. um, and while the money is, this world is run on money. That's helps you do all the things. Right. Right. But I can't tell you the, what it feels like to see that look on someone's face when mm -hmm. they see that their dog is understanding them for the first time and then oh, continues wow. to understand them. Yes. It's, 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 it's all, it's it, it. Yeah. Like there's, there, there aren't words for it. So it's, it's a breakthrough, it. right? I mean, I don't have words either, but I mean, it, it's like a breakthrough. Um, it is, it is like a yeah. breakthrough because okay. you in, in that moment, Mm -hmm. You recognize something about your dog, but you also have a feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that feeling, you can remember what that feeling felt like. And you gotcha. can work towards continuing to get that feeling over and over and over again. And so our our feelings create our thoughts and our thoughts create our actions. And yep. if we have really good thoughts, even on the bad days, We'll, we'll still have really good actions, which will then give us more good, more good thoughts. So yeah, it, you, you just got to be as positive as you can when you're working with your dog and it'll just, it'll snowball. The happiness will snowball. It'll be great. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. hundred percent. I totally agree, especially once you reach that breakthrough and it's just mind blowing. The light bulb comes on with the dog. The light bulb comes on with you. And then a whole new world opens up, a whole new door of possibilities in mm -hmm. enhancing that relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Kim, I have had such a joy having you on this show. Uh, I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. You're so very welcome. Yes, thank you so much for having me on. I I love talking about this stuff. I'm a super dog geek, so I love oh, it. Oh <laughs> well, well, hey, uh, I, I know myself and a lot of other friends of mine are dog geeks as well, and more than happy to geek out with you on on the topic for sure. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So now I'd like to get to a segment that I call three for the road as we near wrapping up here in three for the road. That's where I ask my guests three random yet thought provoking questions that I challenge them to answer in five words or less. So what do you say, Kim, you think you're up for it? Oh, let's do this. All right. <laughs> yes, let's, do it. <laughs> let's do it. Fantastic. And by the way, my questions are not cookie cutter. Okay. They are customized okay. based Perfect. on my guests expertise and background. All right. Okay. okay. Here we go. Question one. <laughs> oh gosh. Let's see here. Um, I want to make sure that. All right. This is, these are so fitting for you, by the way. And the reason I'm saying this real quick is because um, as you have been explaining to me and to the listeners, uh, the feeling or a message or a response that a dog would give you and you know, and you didn't do a lot of barking or imitating a bark. You actually translated into English in, in what they were saying, kind of like the alpha dog, right? When someone steps out of line, he's like, Hey man, you can't do that. Don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? So mm -hmm. you translated that. And, and these questions are kind of centered around that. So uh, let's see here. Um, yeah. And all these were, if we could translate barks, pants, licks, and other actions that dogs do into English. Question number one, what is your dog saying to you the minute you come home from work? You're back? 
Like, <laughs> I love it. Out of excitement, right? You're back. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's not oh, like, oh, you're back already. I, I normally have two two responses. Um, uh -huh. Sometimes Harlow's just chilling on the floor and I walk yeah. in and she just looks up at me and she's like, mm. you're here. Hi. You're here. <laughs> um, and then other there times. <laughs> so glad to see. Yeah. Um, and then other times she comes to me mm -hmm. at the door, the tail is wagging and it's like, yeah. mom, you're home. And yeah, so, so uh, it's, it's sometimes a mix, but yeah. Love it. Love it. That's a great translation. Question number two, what is your dog saying to you when they're ripping up one of your shoes? OMG, this is so good. <laughs> OMG, this is so good. I like that. OMG, I, like I said OMG, yeah, one word. No, yeah, okay. so a lot of the times our dogs chew on stuff, and mm -hmm. it's, in all honesty, I think it's because it tastes like us, it smells like mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on how old the dog is, um, they it could just feel really good in their mouth. Um, gotcha. dogs have, a, dogs have over 200 million scent receptors. We have 5 million. So we smell tomato wow. sauce cooking on the stove and it smells amazing. Yeah. Your dog yeah. smells the oregano, the parsley, the onions, the tomatoes, amazing. how ripe the, most likely something as, as deep as how ripe the tomatoes were. Was one a little rotten? Ooh, okay. But I'm sure it still tastes good. And they, they smell everything. That's how dogs wow. are able to sniff out like the the guns and the drugs and the, sure, the all sure. the all those crazy things differentiate between products and all that stuff. So gotcha. so when they smell wow. that shoe, they could be smelling something that you rubbed your foot against and they're just yeah. like, ooh, that smells good. Um yeah. it could be your scent. It mm -hmm. could be um I don't know, dogs lick each other's butts. So it might be this your smelly feet. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But for some strange reason, they like it. So, gotcha. Yeah, it sounds like it's uh, it's just another way they try to be close to you or get close to uh -huh. you. Yeah, yeah. nice. Uh -huh. All right. Question number three, topping us off for three for the road. What is your dog saying to you when you're eating? Mom, please for me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Is that I've, is that what Harla says? Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> Looking away. Uh, I love it. Um, she's yeah. She's she's a character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. That is hilarious. Oh, wow. Kim, that completes three for the road. You did a great job. Thank great. you for playing along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. And thanks so much for coming on the show. I would love to have you on uh, down the line a little later to give the listeners an update on like things like your summit, you know? Yeah, if, if yeah that'd be great. Yes. Okay, fantastic. And, and by the way, I'm going to have direct links to your uh, Facebook group uh, in the episode show notes so the yeah. listeners can connect and perhaps even join your Facebook group while listening to this awesome conversation. And, uh, and, and, and it has truly been a joy having you on the show, Kim. I want to thank you once again. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I... I uh... Thank you. Yeah, that means that means a lot. Thank you. You're very welcome. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in and listening. And look, if you have a loved one or coworker, colleague, friend, relative who seems to be really, really down in the dumps, going through dark days of despair, um, they seem like they're at the end of their rope, not sure where to turn or who to turn to. Um, I humbly ask that you please share this show with them. Because on the road to rediscovery, we want our listeners to know two things. One, you're not alone. And two, there is always hope. The road to rediscovery, it's a movement, a revolution. And guess what? You are now part of it. We're all roadies on this journey of life. 
and it sure feels good having you on the road with me. Thanks again for listening. We'll chat again soon. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of The Roads Rediscovered. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us an email at roadsrediscoverypodcast at gmail.com and leave us any questions or comments you may have. The Roads Rediscovery is an AJ Shark production. 